Hi, my name is Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today we've got a very special full moon in Pisces video uh, because I'm joined by people, which makes it extra nice. Um, so we'll, we'll do the, the normal things. I'm, I'm going to add a few extra bits to this, this full moon video, but let's just get into it. So what I like to do with, with talking about whether it's the full moon or the new moon, um, just to recap what the full moon represents generally in the sky. And I've got a nice... Um, illustration of this. Uh, I guess hopefully you can see that. Um, so effectively, this is the sun, this is the earth, that's the moon, and what the full moon would, would look like in a cartoon form uh, seen from earth. But basically, this is the full moon gets formed when the moon is on the opposite side um, of the earth to the sun. So the, the, if you think about the light from the sun is, is reaching the moon, illuminating it, and uh, hence why the full moon in the sky will look big and bright and full and round. Um, so with that, we get some symbolism re relating to fullness, culmination, um, completions. It's kind of like analogies that have been used in the pregnant belly. Um, there's something coming to completion. Um, and with that, you can, you can get endings as well. Peak moments, even moments of madness. These are all the full moon things. I'm just going to stop sharing that screen for a sec and switch over to, um, I thought we would go back to, um, to the new moon in Pisces that happened six months ago. This is something that um, I used to find really, really helpful. And I still do just in terms of understanding some of the ways things could be culminating now that actually got started, not just at the last new moon, our, our new moon in Virgo a couple of weeks ago, but actually at this new moon in Pisces that came through six months ago. So that was on the 2nd of March at 11 degrees of Pisces. So let's just um, circle that. And this is an interesting one. I had to like look back to my notes because I thought, wow, remember when Jupiter was in Pisces and um, <laughs> along, along with Neptune uh, and we had that new moon, which was very close to, to Jupiter. Um, the other things that were happening around that new moon were Saturn was conjunct Mercury, Mars and Venus, sorry, Mars and Venus and Pluto were all conjunct as well. So there were lots of unions happening. I, from this new moon, when I first looked at this, I thought, okay, well, there's a sense of hope, of optimism, a sense that, you know, everything's going to be all right with this new start, this, this you know, spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, that said, I did note that Neptune wasn't wasn't so far from this new moon and was uh, flavoring things quite a lot. So that sense of optimism and, and hope, there might be a sense that we were seeing things through rose tinted glasses. Things weren't all as they were cracked up to be. And I, I know that I'm saying this and talking, uh, you know, back in time, but I think it's it's quite relevant now. So. Here's something that I noticed that I, I'd wrote in my journal from around that time. So keeping in mind, this is happening in my ninth house. I was saying that I was a bit bored and that I was looking forward to going away. Um, me and my partner had talked about going away in May, just like two months from this new moon. That didn't happen. Instead, we moved town. So that kind of put a dampener on our spends for, for any travel. Um, and there hasn't been any travel really since for us. Uh, I went to a conference, but that was on my own. It doesn't really count. So my ninth house aspirations, these kind of, yeah, like lockdown's over. We can travel again. It's going to be great. Um, they they didn't come through. There was a sort of disillusion. Um, other good things happened, but things weren't, as I said, they were all cracked up to be. However, I did also set some intentions around that time around reconnecting to my spiritual path, meditating more frequently. And more recently, this has been true. So in a sense, some things are coming to culmination, but they aren't so um, tangible. And that's kind of my theme for this full moon today. Uh, I want to just pause there for a second. Can anyone actually remember back to what was going on for them in March? Uh, maybe um, if, feel free to share what house this new moon is happening in for you. And if, if any of these themes are... Um, kind of repeating themselves from from March I think I um started learning about the diamond at, at that time uh which was interesting I, I remember I think I discovered your channel oh cool <laughs> around that time 
So I've got that. It was the 10th of March. I'm using the same mm -hmm. book so I can see, but it was um, the fifth house uh, is Pisces for me. So, yeah, interesting. That's interesting. And remind me, do you know where your lot of diamond is? Just kind of curious. It's in the eighth house for me yeah, I'm yes. in Gemini. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's interesting. Um, I, I do recommend like this is one of my favorite things to do with new moons and full moons is that six month gap I think we've all talked about that before but um it's it often to me feels clearer than look just looking back to the new moon um yeah. that's interesting so it'd be interesting to see how like yeah like creative things have kind of bloomed in your life since then yes I think it has definitely yeah mm -hmm. um all right so I'm gonna move on to more recent context so uh let's just pull up the last sorry the first quarter moon our most recent whoops most recent first quarter moon so this came through on the 3rd of september uh and so this is when the moon makes that first square to the sun following the new moon so this is following the new moon in virgo i thought okay cool this is a more of an optimistic moon than, than we've had before I say that because of the moon in, in Sag, we're at a turning point in the cycle and it's a bit of a make or break moment. Um, there was a sense of we're doing the Virgo thing and analyzing or evaluating or even judging our work. We're assessing things. Have I done enough work? How, will my hard work pay off? I keep talking about work. It doesn't need to be work. It's just like, have I done enough efforting? Have I done enough here? Um, and that the, what was required here was this idea of um, enthusiasm and hope and Jupiter is was was supporting this this moon really happily by that trine at the same time we had Mars moving into an opposition so Mars has been a really prominent player in the last few moons and then will be again um, and it had just entered its shadow by this point so we're building up to this Mars retrograde. So there was a sense that any actions that we take from now on might be subject to review, delays, a lack of momentum, which obviously we can't avoid. We still have to take action in this time. Um, but th there is a sense that, you know, we were busy trying to get things done between that new moon and first quarter moon. I definitely felt like that for me. I'm just trying to think um, the 3rd of September so that was last Saturday yeah I mean I just launched this new Kickstarter and there's definitely a sense of like okay back to school like that kind of September back to school feeling like things are kind of gearing up again and um yeah just just a reminder that what happens at the first quarter moon can can very much reflect how the full moon plays out for us so how how was this um how was this past weekend for you all did you feel this first quarter moon Were any did any kind of like tensions arise um following the new moon anything that you were trying to bring into manifestation but maybe 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 didn't work out so well yeah so um with that march moon i was preparing to get into the astrology class over at nightlight yeah so then this new moon on the third I had totally forgotten that I had to acquire a certain number of CE hours for my state board for my current profession so I've got this jam-packed study juxtaposing getting uh, hours acquired and then I also have some other things that are time sensitive so yeah that was huge busy time so, and it you had the sort of Pisces education the astrology thing going on and you also had this this Virgo side of things which was yeah, yeah that that's that's interesting um yeah and so anyone else sorry before I move on okay so all right let's get to the to the full moon da, 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 da. um this is coming through tomorrow. So I'm recording this on Friday the 9th, 10th of September, at least in the UK, this is coming through at 10, about 10.40 a.m. at 17 degrees of Pisces. So 
it's fair. It's another, you know, when we're talking about anything happening in Pisces, particularly these later degrees, I am thinking about Neptune. It's it's close enough that uh, to, to be uh, concerned that Neptune is hanging around. It's still an axis with that pesky Mars. So Mars is still in the mix. Um, there's a pretty close aspect uh, that sextile with Uranus, though I'm not I'm not too worried about the sextile so much here. It's interesting that the ruler of this moon, Jupiter, is getting opposed by that retrograde, recently retrograde Mercury, and Jupiter can't see the moon by whole sign aspect. So there's a sense that the, um, Jupiter cannot support the moon uh, to do what she's trying to do. So what does that mean? To me, this speaks to a full moon that there might be a sense, some sense of disillusionment of disappointment of anticlimax. It might not be a bad thing, but just a, oh, is that, is that all? Um, that, that might be one of the feelings of this full moon. But on the upside, there might be a hidden blessing. We might begin to question what it is that we thought we what we thought we wanted. So, for example, that um, those aspirations I had at the start of the year of like doing all these things and like 2022 is going to be this <laughs> this year of like travel and like um, I had so many plans at the start of um, 2022 and it's hilarious how many of those things just didn't manifest for various reasons, some very Neptunian reasons actually. So. Um, sickness, things like that, just, just plans like dissolving in that Neptunian way. So at the same time, there has been a realization that maybe there are things that are more real, more authentic, deeper, more meaningful, more fulfilling that might have come into the picture since, since that new moon way back in March. And this might be the case for you as well. Maybe you've gained things that have been uh, more intangible, but also more real, like in their nature, more meaningful. And the, the questions that I was kind of coming back to with this full moon, particularly in Pisces, is what does real growth look like? Um, and I ask that because Jupiter, who rules Pisces, is the planet that supports growth and really, really stands for growth. It's exalted in Cancer, a sign that relates to new life. Yes, it's, you know, we think about expansion, um, abundance, but not necessarily always in a material sense, especially when we're thinking about Pisces. So I kind of get the feeling that this Neptune element is asking us to count the intangible qualities in our lives and maybe show some gratitude for them. I kind of always bring things back to gratitude, particularly at full moons. I always think like, what are we, what, what are we noticing? You don't need to be beginning things. It's it's more of a noticing what what what, what things have grown. So those are just some general thoughts in this full moon. I'm going to share the the tarot card as well. Um, how am I going to do this? Hmm. There it is. Hopefully you can see that happy chap. Um, so this is the tarot card associated with Deccan 2 of Pisces where this full moon is happening. So it's the nine of cups. And there's a sense with this card that we're being rewarded after a period of hard work and effort. We can kind of sit back on our laurels or potentially at least this is what the card is representing. Maybe that's how we feel right now. That last new moon, that new moon of Virgo, the theme that I was identifying was there is a lot of hard work. There are a lot of moving parts. And that first quarter reminded us to check in. Um, you know, how, are we doing the work and do we have the faith to see it through? And now here's the reward, assuming that we've we've done the work. And those rewards are kind of coming to bloom now. And as I said, this might not be in a material, physical, tangible uh, plane, but they could all, you know, but they could be on a more of a spiritual or energetic plane. So it's also just a reminder to acknowledge any growth, evolution, any developments that we've experienced in this time and uh, and be happy like this this chap there. Um, I'm not much of a tarot reader, but does anybody have any reflections on, does anybody know the tarot any better um, and has, or any just intuitive hits about this, this card? I'd be interested to hear. Oh, hello, uh, let's just, hey Ruth. Yeah, I, actually I want you uh, to tell you something that happened to me today. I, as I said to you, I'm on holidays, yes, for the weekend. And uh, we are in a city that we don't live in, yes, in Tel Aviv. 
And uh, we wanted to go to a place, and my, my natal car, chart is very cardinal. Yeah, so I've been my whole life the person doing things for everybody. And <clears throat> around March, I decided that I should stop doing that because it's not good for my health. Mm. Yes, my physical health is not emotional, it's not good for me, as it's not good for the surrounding. Yes, because they are so used to me doing everything that they don't even try. Yes. <laughs> so I think that all these months, yes, something has been working. Yes. In somewhere. Yes. <laughs> in the, yeah, in, in the space. And uh, this morning when we went out, I checked for the map to see where we are staying and where we want to go. And I sent to my partner, yes, a uh, picture of everything, so and he when we go out, he said, "I don't know what you send that to me," and because I want to take the lead, I said to him, "Yeah," and uh, actually he said, "Well, but this is not useful." He that's what he said. So again, I started going, and um, I wasn't sure of the name of the street where yes, where we were looking for. So I asked somebody, and they sent us somewhere else. So we started discussing. And then I said, you know what? Do it your way. And I will sit. There was exactly, uh, yes, a, a place to sit where uh, how this chat is sitting in the car. And I sit down there and I started smelling the, the sea, the, yes, the smell of the sea and seeing the people walking around and the colors. Yes, and I just was relaxing, yes, like this guy <laughs> and letting somebody else take the lead and it was great yeah and i i also i think it's it's a kind of accomplishment for me mm. because yes and we were talking afterwards and he said whenever you said you don't want to do things it you lasted three hours in that attempt <laughs> yeah today yes it's it's the it's standing much more much more time so for me the, this is the the learning for me at this mm. time which is kind of development for me yeah for sure and a very Pisces one in that it, it isn't about that kind of cardinal energy of, of pushing forward. Yeah. You mm -hmm. you can sit back, like literally, I think you sat down like this guy. Yes, um, exactly. Exactly yeah. like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoy myself. Actually, I have my son and Mercury in the 12th house in Pisces. Ah, oh, brilliant. That's yeah. that's a good one, Ruth. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, very, very, very nice. Yeah. And I mean, learning to enjoy. <laughs> not doing yes just sitting down what's the name of this card this is the nine of cups the nine of cups great thank you thanks Ruth. um melissa here uh, yeah there you go i really like this card i think it's meant to be quite a positive card which i was a bit surprised to see uh, in this deck and but yeah isn't it like a wish fulfillment almost or that he's like a merchant and he's putting out all of his kind of um products or everything that he's achieved and that's why he looks so happy and I'm, I'm feeling a lot of like scattered energy so it's it's interesting that he's like arranged it on a table and I think that's what I need to do with my life at the minute <laughs> hey it's it's almost like that's how um sometimes I I, I call them brain dumps but I've been doing yes, that a lot recently <laughs> Me too. And it's, like, it's just how can I make some mm -hmm. sense out of all these um these post-its that are in my head and actually yeah. now that you've brought that up it's kind of like e these cu these cups could easily be scattered all over the floor yes yeah and yet that maybe that's part of why he's looking so chuffed with himself it's that he's found <laughs> this way of let me just lay it all out yes yeah. exactly exactly and I heard someone say something about you know the table as well being like um, what's underneath the tablecloth like he's kind of displaying it in a positive way um so yeah, interesting yeah it's an interesting card really interesting mm -hmm. um thank you Melissa um Gail how's it going hey it's going well so this is really interesting because I can relate to this it looks like I mean for cups I would think it's about which are full which are able to receive maybe yeah. but there's all these options and yet the fellow is looking very grounded and as if he has, you know, things in order, he's, he's confident, he's grounded. 
So I can relate to that because I feel that all those cups, whether they're full or overflowing or needing to be filled. Um, but with this Pisces moon, there's just this sense of real calm in terms of, you know, the important stuff mm -hmm. and discerning that and not being all over. And like you said, cups scattered on the floor. Mm -hmm. So that's just my quick review. I love that. And you remind me that, um, he does, he has his feet firmly planted on the floor and regardless of what, like you said, like regardless of the state of those cups, regardless of how full or empty or dirty they are, how many like fingerprints are on them. Um, regardless of what's going on, he's got his feet on the floor and, and that feels very um, apt for this moment and kind of like a choice that we can make perhaps. Um, hi, Ruth. Yeah. I just wanted to add that I, I for sure I connect with the peaceful and calmness, but for me, he's not grounded in the floor. He's grounded in his heart because if you see the, the, the floor and the ceiling or the back is the same. So it's for me, it's space. It could be floating. Yes. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Yes. Whether it's the floor or whether it's space. For me, the grounding, it's really inside, yes, like for a, a Piscean, yes, uh, space. And it doesn't matter if you are really grounded, you can find that calmness, yes, and that peace, that contentment, yes. And But for that, you need that things are in order, yes, and not scattered. They go together in a way. Mm. That, that yeah that's that's brilliant and makes a lot of sense um again because of this we're not talking about earthy energy here we are talking about the the water energy and um yeah that's a really good observation um thank you all i, I knew you'd all have much better things to say about this than i did so um what i thought we'd do just before i um finish with the the next quarter moon is i'm going to share my um i'll keep this up actually my journal prompts for this, this full moon. So I'm just going to go through each of the signs. It shouldn't take too long. Um, so for Pisces, okay, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to share this other screen. Uh, okay. All right. So imagining that this Pisces here, that is on the, in the first house, I'm not going to move the wheel. I'm just going to use the circles so for Pisces rising you've got this in your first house so the journal prompt or the reflection for this full moon is how have I grown personally in who I am have my personal habits my outlook been developing for the better celebrate whatever you notice and potentially reflect back over the last six months or since that last new moon we had in Virgo all right so for Aquarius rising this will be happening in your second house. This is a place that we usually associate with the tangible things. So the money, the, the car, whatever, but there's much more to it. And I think the question I would ask um, Aquarius Rising is what supports you? What inner resources, what skills, what talents? You know, as Ruth was saying, like how, where's the grounding happening in your heart? Regardless of any outer wealth or possessions, how have your inner resources grown? Right. With Capricorn rising, this is happening in your third house. So the third house of, of a myriad of things. Uh, but my main kind of theme for this third house today is where has your mental atten attention been going? So how have how has your mind, daily mental activities, the conversations that you're having, how have those evolved since the last new moon, whether that was the Virgo one or the, the one six months ago? What has come to light about the information that you consume, the daily rituals that you partake in, like a daily commute? With Sagittarius rising, this is happening in your fourth house of home, family, roots. How have your relation to your roots, your home, your family grown in this time? Has a relationship with a parent evolved recently? Even if it's not like a literal, like I picked up the phone, it's a something that's changed in your heart. Have you realized something about your physical home? Do you need to move? Have you deepened your appreciation of it? Have you connected with ancestors? With Scorpio rising, this is happening in your fifth house. So my question for Scorpio risings, this is, how, have, how has your sense of fun, of joy, of pleasure, 
evolved during this moon cycle? What's been illuminated about your relationship with creativity, joy? If you have kids, this might speak to something culminating in their life as well. With Libra rising, this is happening in your sixth house. So um, my question here is, what have you become aware of in regards to your physical limitations? How has your relationship to service developed? If you have pets, can't forget the pet signification of the sixth house. Has anything come to light with their well-being? With Virgo rising, this is happening in your seventh house. What's grown in your relationship in this past lunar cycle? How have you seen your partner bloom? And if you're single, how has your relationship to relationships evolved? Have any interpersonal relationships developed? With Leo rising, this is happening in your house of um, the eighth house. So what has grown in terms of your shared resources? Could this be something great blooming for a partner? Um, or even just the simple realization that if you have been giving too much of yourself, um, now you're becoming aware of your limitations and that you need to keep some of those resources for yourself. Remember that Pisces stuff, there's often like questions around boundaries and I know that that can be particularly true with the eighth house. With cancer rising, this is happening in your ninth house. And my question for you is, how has your mind expanded since that last new moon? Have you grown in any spiritual practices? What new expansive experiences have informed this cycle? And again, this, these are not always going to be tangible things. That's kind of what I'm noticing with this full moon. With Gemini rising, how has this is happening in your 10th house. How has your career been evolving? What new ambitions, responsibilities, and opportunities have made themselves known? With uh, where are we at? Taurus rising. It's happening in your 11th house. How has your network grown? How have you encountered, have you encountered any mentors or allies that support you, that inspire you and help you on your path, like a good diamond, the house of the good diamond, the 11th house? And with Aries rising. How has your awareness grown about the patterns or the people that don't support me? What unhealthy thought patterns have made themselves known? And how are you, you know, like just taking a time out like Ruth is. It's a great example of the 12th house um, full moon. Okay, so just going to, what am I doing? It's the yeah last quarter moon. So this is taking, we're going to take a fast forward now to uh, for about a to about a week from now on the 17th of September this is where the last quarter moon will come in so it's the closing square in the lunar uh the monthly lunar cycle um, and this is coming through at 24 degrees of Gemini so Mercury is um ruling this and is still retrograde um there is also a square that's perfecting with uh Neptune that's a really close square to Neptune the moon has also just made an encounter with Mars, um, who's been again part of these moons for some time now. So questions here, obviously around Gemini things. You know, we're going to have that Mars retrograde in Gemini soon. Mercury's retrograde. Uh, thinking about a lot of mental confusion, communication breakdown, particularly in this last quarter. Um, me and Melissa, we've already been talking about that, that sense that like things feel very scattered right now. So there's a sense here that I, I, I wonder if this full moon is kind of preparing us for that and asking us to slow down. Maybe you just take whatever we need, take whatever space we need to clarify things. You know, um, recently I had an experience where I wrote somebody a letter rather than trying to hash it out in conversation. And it was a really, really effective form of communication because my Mercury and Aries could slow down. Um, my kind of scattered thinking affected by all of this, this astrology at the moment um, was able to, to just like clarify things. And uh, the, the person who received the letter was able to process it all in their own time. So it slows you down. Um, it makes sure you're heard, but it's also more respectful to somebody else's time. So that's the kind of thinking that I think will be helpful with this last quarter moon. Um, like I said, I can see a lot of mental confusion, but the trick is to make a distinction between just seeking more information to get clarity. Like sometimes I think when we're trying to find an answer to a problem or a question, 
um, it's like, well, I just need to get all the information. I need to find out exactly how to do this and watch all the YouTube videos explaining how, how it's done. Um, but the question I think with this last quarter might be, um, what, what are the, what's the right information and what are the good questions that I need to ask? Uh, cause more isn't necessarily more with, with this, um, and last quarter moons, are, you know, in a very general way can, can symbolize like sloughing off, um, removing things as opposed to gaining things. So I'm just thinking, how can we, how can we simplify, clarify those questions that we need to be asking? Um, those are my thoughts about that uh, last quarter moon. Um, any final reflections before we wrap up? Um, oh, hey, Ruth. Yeah. Actually, I have uh, my natal moon in 25th of uh, Gemini. Ah, so that and, will... Yeah, what you just said, yes, I'm taking it like my mantra. <laughs> yes, for, yes, for the rest of this uh, moon cycle. Yeah, okay. I think it will really very, yes, perfect Yeah, for everything I'm... Yes, what I was telling you before also. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll, we'll check in at the new moon and see how it's it's, it's yeah, working out. <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> Actually, I think it will be more more strong, stronger for me because, yes, it's Definitely. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I should say that, I mean, this whole lunar cycle since that new moon, um, maybe even before that, we've been looking at the, those mutable placements a lot. So anyone like Ruth who has... Um, a, a planet in those mutable signs particularly around those later degrees um yeah gonna feel it more yeah so um the next meetup is going to be on tuesday the 20th of september um i think that's that's happening at the same time but basically uh and i'll be i'll be doing these meetups if anyone who's watching this wants to join any of these you can it's free the link to join is on my website catroseastrology.com um, i'm going to be varying the times of day that i do them so i'm going to do some later some earlier um, so hopefully people can join from different parts of the world uh, and i just added the next full moon which is in aries uh, which will be happening in october october 7th just a couple of days before the next full moon so all of that information is at catroseastrology.com um, thanks for joining me today guys and I'm, I'm still working out how best to do these but um you're, you're really really helpful and definitely taught me a lot about that tarot card as well <laughs> all right everyone well happy full moon and uh take care thanks, thanks a lot for everybody thank you <laughs> bye, bye.